So hello, hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. The systems face a several risks. As you as say early, cybersecurity threats is one of the major risks. Changing regulatory compliance, it's another major risk. And finally, the complexity of managing those services that continuously expand through the variety of a cloud they are built in their environments. CSPM in this stage acts as a vital defense mechanism and stands as the vigilant guardian, continuously monitoring and secure the cloud resources against misconfigurations, compliance lapses, and vulnerabilities. CSPM is equipped with the advanced monitoring tools to detect issues ranging from a minor mis misconfiguration that the cloud comprise to secure it through potential compliances issue that may lead to penalties. The benefits of a CSPM uh, lies in three fundamental components, risk identification and remediations, data and workload protections, and compliance insurance. Those are the three main benefits of having CSPM. What are the risks of not having CSPM? Well, there are plenty of risks, but mainly data breaches. Without CSPM, vulnerabilities in the system could lead to the data theft, analogous to a security breach in a physical building. Also, you may face compliance viola violations. Non-compliance with the regulatory st standards could result in substantial fines and legal penalties. In the end, also you have reputational damage. Security breach and compliance failure could significantly damage your organization's reputation and impact your customer trust. So before we move on, let's first introduce Defender for Cloud for those that may not fully aware of what it is and what does it do. Microsoft Defender for Cloud, it is a comprehensive and scalable Synapse solution. For Synapse, we intend cloud native application protection platform. Its function, it functions as an advanced system to navigate the cloud security, just like in high technology GPS. It's not only, he not only navigates through the complexity, but also updates in the real time to alert organization to potential security issues, will guide them through the safest routes and ensures compliance with the current regulation. Central to our discussion today on enhanced cloud security, emer CSPM emerges not just as a key security solution, but as a fully recognized cloud native application protection platform. This distinction is critical, underscoring Defender for Cloud comprehensive approach to secure the cloud environment against a spectrum of threats. As a Synapse solution, Defender for Cloud goes behind traditional security measure. Defender for Cloud offers an integrated suite of capabilities, which are designed to protect applications in data across the entire cloud lifecycle, from development to deployment in operations, in all those within the uh, multi-cloud environment. Defender for Cloud's role as a Synapse solution signifies its ability to provide an end-to-end -end security, incorporating in the cloud infrastructure in the application and services EOSIS. This includes advanced threat protection mechanisms, identity access management, network security, and information protection, all under a unified security management umbrella. Defender for Cloud, Defender for Cloud scalabilities ensures that it adapts to the changing security needs of an organization, making indispensable as an indispensable tool for businesses seeking to navigate the complexity of cloud security with confidence. Furthermore, Defender for Cloud recon recognition as a Synapse solution highlights its alignment with the latest security practices and compliance standards, offering organizations the assurance that their cloud environments are protected by solutions at the forefront of the cloud security innovations. By deploying Defender for Cloud, organizations 
will benefit from an holistic, intelligent security approach, ensuring that their cloud infrastructure and application are resilient against both current and emerging threats. For an organization like EgoShop, the adoption of Defender for Cloud, indeed, they represent a strategic move to equip their cloud operation with one of the most advanced real-time security and navigation system that is available. This shift not only secured the company and the organization journey, but also will transform it into one, more, into one marked by confidence, security, and compliance. Moving next, from our overview of the Microsoft for Cloud, let's now focus on two key offerings that cater, <coughs> that, that cater to the varying organization needs in the cloud security management. And those are the Foundation CSPM and the Defender CSPM. Understanding the solution will enable your organization to make informed decisions that align with your specific security requirement and strategic goals. First of all, the Foundation CSPM. He serves as the bread as the bread rock of your cloud security posture management. Is your foundation? He equips the organization with the essential tools needed to establish baseline security practices. This includes compliance check, vulnerability assessment, secure score, and basic configuration management and remediation. Company implementing foundation CSPM will have the following benefits, risk reduction, compliance insurance, and operational efficiencies. And it's ideal for all organizations beginning their cloud journeys. Or organization with the limited cybersecurity resource looking for a straightforward way to improve their cloud security posture, and for company needing to establish a baseline of the security practices before considering more complex solutions. On the other end, Defender CSPM is the next level up. Organizations require a deeper level of insight and control over the cloud environment. Defender CSPM offer to those organizations, a comprehensive suite of tools. The plan builds upon the foundational features by integrating deeper security analytics, analytics and more proactive threat management tools. It goes behind the basics of offering integrated insight into the, by offering integrated insight into the DevSecOps, you know, the DevOps security processes, external attack surface management, and complementary insight for public exposure IPs, cloud infrastructure and time management team, risk analysis, agent risk capabilities, data sensitivity and secret discovery, attack pet analysis, and a governance platform to manage security vulnerability remediation, including the integration with the ITSM product currently supporting for ServiceNow. This allows for a dynamic and proactive approach to cloud security, catering to enterprise with a complex cloud architecture or those with the stringent security and compliance needs. It allows organization not only to maintain regulatory compliance, but also to proactively manage and mitigate potential security vulnerability with great depth and precision. In the next slide, we'll explore in detail what it takes to plan Microsoft Defender for Cloud uh, CSPM implementation. So as we now decide to go ahead and move to the next level, and we're trying to implement the Defender for Cloud CSPM and Defender CSPM, it's very important and essential to plan strategically such implementations, okay? So we can ensure a successful deployment. The planning stage is where you define your security objectives. You assess your cloud environments and select the most suitable flavor of CSPM that you need. Such process must begin with a depth understanding of your organization's specific cloud security needs, or rooted in a comprehensive assessment of your current cybersecurity landscape and cloud navy application protection platform integration requirements. You need to understand your business context. You need to understand your business size and type, your industry risk. Then you need to assess your cloud environment and posture, identifying your assets, by evaluating the risk of <coughs> that those assets <coughs> are associated with and understanding the compliance needs. Next, you need to define the security requirements. The security control, they are necessary so that you can implement and protect your assets and data. 
you need to do policy definitions and need to have a risk management management strategy. Last step in this, in this planning is what about selecting the right CSPM flavor? Well, choose between foundational and defender CSPM should be a consideration. However, organizations of all the size and complexity can leverage, can start with the, the foundational CSPM and they can progressively evolve into the next level with defender CSPM. That's part of the maturity level. So now let's look a little bit more in detail each component of assessing the cloud environment. Such assessment is, as I say early, it's a foundational step into the implementation plan of Defender for Cloud. The first and perhaps most critical task is indeed conducting a through a, a, a true assessment of your cloud environment. Such process, such task involves a, a, an assessment of your current cloud security posture also involves defining a clear security policies and compliance framework. And finally, identify your most critical assets in data that require focused protections. Beginning with the assessment of your current cloud security posture, by beginning with the assessment, you will aim to understand where your stands in terms of security across all your environments, your cloud environments. And this involves a couple of things, evaluating existing security measure, identifying the vulnerability, and assessing it, your resiliencies against those potential threats. Okay, how do you how do you um, assess your current security posture? You got to look for infrastructure gaps, identify vulnerability in your cybersecurity infrastructure that CSPM solutions can address, and will enhance automatically the overall security posture. Also, you need to look for legacy system limitations. Understand those where those limitations are posed posed by the legacy system can be associated with high risk and aid in, into something more like a bridge. Then you have to have a comprehensive infrastructure assessment. Okay, You need to have you know, the compatibility and integration challenges. By assessing your current technology stack for potential compatibility issues with the CSPM solution by ensuring seamless integrations. And then you have to look for scalability and flexibility by ensuring that the chosen solution can adapt and evolving the cyber threats there and the business needed. All this maintaining obviously robust security across your cloud environment. This baseline assessment is very important in order to tailor your Defender for Cloud capability to your specific needs. That will ensure that you are not just adopting a solution, but you will optimize it to optimize such solution to enhance your security framework. Additionally, you want to Identify your critical assets in data, and that part is vital. It's very important. In the vast ex expanse of a cloud environment, especially when you are in a multi-cloud, not all assets hold the same value and risk. You need to pinpoint those that are the most critical to your operations and most sensitive in nature. You can prioritize the protections, therefore. Defender for Cloud validates, facilitates this through an advanced discovery and classification tools and allows you to focus the proper protection strategy for those high value assets and data. Such targeted approach ensures that your most critical resource are shielded by the strongest defense and they are mitigated, mitigating the risk that were, that were a, a matter the most. Next, you are required to define your security. Um, so you are you needed to define your security requirements. Once you have a basically, you know, fully um, comprehensive your cloud environment and assess um, all the resources, the next step is obviously to define your security policies and the compliance requirement very clearly. The step is very critical, just like the assessment step, as it sets the parameters with, within which your solution will operate. That will ensure that it aligns perfectly with your business needs and security goals. From the previous step, when you have mapped, uh, where you have mapped out your critical assets and your sensitive data that require the highest level of protections, now the process of defining the security requirements helps in to prioritize where the focus of your security efforts and how to allocate those resources most effectively. So now 
assess your existing security controls, identify those areas where they are fall short and address all the current threats. Such assessment, such assessment should cover all aspects of your security framework, the physical and the network, as well as the application and the endpoint protections. You need to consider the specific risk associated, associated with your industry and the business type. For instance, if you are end sensitive customer data, such as in healthcare or finance, your security measure must comply with industry regulatory like APA or GDPR. Those requirements should guide the development of your security policies and the selection of the security controls. You need to develop a detailed risk management strategy, which is also essential. Such strategies should outline how you plan to mitigate identify risk and will include both, both the preemptive measure, such as a regulatory security audits and vulnerability scan, and, and the reactive measure, the mitigations. Finally, you will ensure that your security requirements are well documented and communicated across all your organizations. Such, document, such documentation should include detailed security policies, responsibilities assigned to the team members, and guidelines for handling security, um, security recommendations. The clearly and more comprehensive, the clearly more comprehensive your security requirements are, the more effective your solution will be. By meticulously defining those requirements, the security requirements, you will ensure that you lay that you are going to be sure that you laid off a foundational for an effective CSPM solution that not only protects your critical assets but also supports your overall business objectives. This step is important because it ensures that your cybersecurity measures are proactive, are robust, and are fully integrated with your operational process. Now, selecting appropriate CSPM plan. Well, after defining the security requirements, the next step is enhancing. The next step is, okay, which flavor of CSPM should I adapt? The decision is crucial as it determines the specific capabilities and the tools that your organization will leverage from that moment on it to manage and secure all your cloud environment effectively. Well, the journey of a such of a securing your organization with Defender for Cloud, beginning always with implementing the foundational CSPM that is by default uh, implemented. You decide to use Defender CSPM automatically, you get foundation CSPM. This is the initial phase, which will provide the essential security control, the compliance check, and the configuration management, laying the groundwork for the basic cloud security management. As your organization matures on its security practice, as the complexity of your cloud environment expands, then the transition to the next level is by nature automatically. You're going to be go ahead and move to Defender CSPM. Defender CSPM offers a more advanced suite of tools. As I say, will provide enhanced security posture visibility through intelligent and contextualized insights and risk categorizations. Such advanced phase is designed to cater your organization to more complex needs, such as detailed compliance reporting, sophisticated data detection, and proactive risk management. That's the key word, proactive. Okay, in moving from foundation to defender SSPM, organizations should consider factors such as the scale of their cloud infrastructure, the sensitivity of a data handler, and the specific compliance obligations. These progressions ensures that the security measure growing in grow in sophistications and capability alongside with your organizational needs and the evolving security landscape. Thus, selecting the appropriate SPM is not merely a choice between the two options, but rather a phased approach where organization starts with the foundational aspects and gradually scale up to embrace comprehensive security feature offered by Defender CSPM. This strategy approach ensures that your cloud environment is not only secure from the asset, but also prepared for successful growth and compliance with ever-changing regulatory standards. It is important to recognize that Defender CSPN offers significant advantages for organizations of all sizes, including small and mid-sized business. Defender CSPN stands out due to its comprehensive security capability that enhance overall security posture significantly. This makes this makes it an, an ideal choice, even for small and mid-sized organization looking for a powerful, scalable security solution without the complexity typically associated with advanced security system. By adapting Defender CSPM, 
Even the small organization can achieve the level of security, sophistication that protects against advanced threat and manages complex compliance requirements effectively. Such a choice, such as a choice not only enhance your immediate security capability, but also sets the foundation for the robust and scalable cloud security management. Now let's look how to, once you finally plan it and implement the next stage, what is it? The next critical step is obviously put that in production and operationalize. The operation of Defender CS, of Microsoft Defender for Cloud, CSPM in general, Defender CSPM, is a phase that involves turning strategic plans into practical, actionable security measures that are integrated into your daily operations, which will ensure your cloud environment is constantly secure. First of all, you want to begin by defining a clear role and responsibilities. This is a very crucial part of your operationalizations because it will ensure that every team member knows their specific duty and how they contribute to overall security posture. You need to create, and it's your highly recommend to do so, a responsibility metric, okay, that which outlines your the CSPM, the this capabilities, ensure that the tasks such as monitor, remediation, change requests, and compliance checks, and so on, are clearly assigned. Next, you want to establish a robust process and procedures. This should include detailed workflow for regular, for regular security assessment, mitigation process, and compliance management. Each of those processes should be documented and accessible, ensuring the procedures are followed consistently and effectively. Automation here plays a very key role. Why? Because it will help to streamline operation and reduce the likelihood of human error. We are all human and we all make error, right? We want to very much reduce as much as possible. For example, an automatic, an automatic event slash notification for a compliance deviation and an automated remediation process can indeed enhance the operation efficiencies and strengthen your security responsiveness. Also, you want to continuously monitor and improve such process, and that is an integral part of your operational phases. Utilize the you want to utilize the real-time monitoring tool provided by Defender CSPM to keep a vigilant high on your cloud environment. Such vigilant high will allow you for an immediate detection and response to potential security threats. Regularly review and update your security process to adapt to the new threats and changes in your cloud environment as your cloud environment continuously expands. Such Iterative improvement process will ensure that your security measure remains very much effective over time. And the other key over here is effective over time. Finally, we want to make sure that everybody knows their own, uh, their proper role and how to properly be efficient with the tool. So training awareness are also crucial. A regular training sessions should be conducted to ensure that all team members are up to date to the latest security practice and technology. This will help foster a security aware culture within your organization where security is everyone's responsibilities. Operationalize your, your uh, Defender for Cloud and CSPM and Defender CSPM solution effectively will ensure that it's not just a set of, it, that that is not just a set of tools, but a dynamic, an integral part of your organization's security strategy. Such approach to the cloud security management trend can dramatically reduce the risk and will definitely enhance your organization's ability to respond to the security challenges swiftly and most effectively way. Next, we're gonna talk about those role and responsibility within this process. That is central to successful to the successful operationalization of the of a Defender for Cloud, Defender CSPM. And that is where you're gonna make a clear definitions of a role and their responsibilities. Defining the role responsibilities, it is indeed essential to ensure effective execution and oversights of those security measures. You, the clear role of delineations help in managing the cloud security posture very much effectively. How you do that? By assigning a specific task, a responsibility to the appropriate team member, which in turn will facilitate the accountability and the operational efficiencies. First, we'll start by identifying those key positions that are they're going to be directly interact 
with and manage with the Defender CSPM tools. Those roles include the Cloud Security Architect. The Cloud Security Architect are responsible for defining the overall security architecture and ensure it aligns with the, with the business objectives. Then you have the Cloud Security Posture Administrator. The administrator of the Cloud Security Posture Management will manage the day-to-day -day operation of the CSPM tools, including the configuration, the monitoring, and troubleshooting. And finally, you're going to have the compliance officers. The compliance officers will ensure that cloud deployments adhere to relevant to the relevant law, regu laws, regulation, and the policies of your industry. Each of those roles should have a clearly defined responsibilities that covers all aspects of the cloud security management, from preventions and detections to remediations. It is also important to ensure that are those roles are staffed with individuals with the appropriate skill and experience, and that and the ongoing training is will be provided to keep those skills up to date with the latest cloud security development and the latest release of the Defender for Cloud. Moreover, fostering a collaborative environment is crucial. You need to encourage a regular communication between roles to ensure everyone is aware of the latest security threats and updates. Such collaboration can be facilitated through regular meetings, share the platform for updates, and continuous training sessions. Finally, you want to establish a chain of a command, a clear escalation path for handling security recommendations and the remediation. This will ensure that when a security issue arises, it is swiftly escalated to the appropriate personnel who have the authority to take necessary action, thereby will reduce the time to respond and mitigate such threats. Now, we talk about process. So the next thing is you want to establish the process and the procedures. OK, establish such uh, robust procedures and set of process is another critical step in operationalize Defender for Cloud and Defender CSPM with the organization. Such a stage involves developing a structured approach to manage and monitor your cloud environment effectively, ensuring that security measures are constantly applied and the compliance standards are maintained and mitigated. Begin such process by developing a comprehensive set of security policy, just like we outlined earlier. OK, those policies should be clear document, as I said earlier, and easily accessible to all relevant staff, ensuring that everyone understands their role in managed security. And obviously, we already defined the role. Next is to set up a standardized pr procedure for regular activities such as vulnerability scanning and compliance audit. Incorporate continuous monitoring procedure to ensure that any deviation from the security policy are quickly identified and obviously addressed. And Defender for Cloud offer a plethora of, uh, of tools to do such. Lastly, ensure that all process and procedure are regularly reviewed and updated to reflect the new security challenge and, and the technology advancement of the product. And for such, you would need a continuous monitoring and improvement, which is essential component for a successful operationalization of, of the Defender for Cloud. This ongo the ongoing process of uh, improvement, ensure that your cloud security measure will remain effective, adaptive, and aligned with, your, with both current and all the emerging security threats. You want to start by continuously scanning your cloud environment for security misconfigurations and compliance deviation. The goal at that point is to have a real-time visibility in your cloud operation, enabling the proactive management of your security posture. Next, you want to integrate feedback mechanism in your monitoring system. It's also important to establish a routine for regularly reviewing updated security policies. And finally, you want to ensure the impro that <clears throat> improvements are documented and communicated across your organizations. Now let's go into the best practices. Incorporating the best practices into implementation of Defender CSPM or the Defender for Cloud is crucial for maximizing the, efficient, the effectiveness and efficiencies of your cloud security strategies. Those practices not only enhance your security, but also will streamline operation and will foster proactive security culture within your entire organization. You want to begin by ensuring that your CSPM implementation is aligned with the industry standards and best practices. This alignment will guarantee that your security measure will meet the required level of protection and compliance. 
which is at the end specifically important for our organization in a specific regulator industry. Utilize the comprehensive security capability of Defender CSPM to implement the advanced security control they are recognized and recommended by the security expert. Next, you want to prioritize the integration of security into all phases of, it, of your IT operations, from the initial design and the development of the application or services to, the, to their deployment and maintenance. This is what we call a shift and left approach, which will ensure that the security is considered at every step and reduce every step of the life cycle and will reduce the chances of vulnerability being introduced into your system. Microsoft Defender for Cloud will provide tools that can seamlessly integrate into the development process, enhances the security from your application from the start. And those tools are available both in the foundation CSPM and elevated in terms of capability into Defender CSPM. Uh, additionally, if you have um, uh, uh, um, other capabilities such as the GitHub Advanced Security or the similar for the L, those capabilities and feature will additionally be elevated. Another best practice is to automate as many to automate as many security processes as possible. Automation is an, indeed another key factor over here, just a highlighted early, because it helps to eliminate eliminate the human factor. We reduce the workload in your security team and ensure that actions are taken swiftly and consistently. Automated compliance check checks, threat vector detections and response process enabled by Defender for Cloud. Defender CSPM can significantly improve the efficiency and effectiveness of your security operations. Regularly review and assess the effectiveness of security measure of security posture management measures. This will include the continuous assessment of your security posture, your compliance status, and your remediation response capabilities. Utilize the analytic and uh, reporting tool provided by Microsoft Defender for Cloud, Defender CSPM, to gain insight in the security operation and identify areas for improvement. Finally, cultivate a strong culture of security awareness with your organization. I can't stop to strength to say that over and over. You want to regularly make sure that you <clears throat> um, provide training session and security workshops and awareness campaign to, that can help ensure that all your employees and your team understands their rules, their roles in maintaining security and up to date with the latest security practices and threats. By adopting all those best practices, your organization can ensure that its Defender CSPM implementation is robust, compliant, and capable of responding effectively to the dynamic cybersecurity challenges. However, how do you adapt? How do you overcome those the, the, the typical adoption challenges? Well. <clears throat> The very first thing is, is um, very first thing is to effectively implement the solutions, right? That requires a, the, the, the solution. Then the next thing is obviously the operate the operationalizations of a such, and that is a continuous process that involves continuous or regular updates and adjustment. It's not one time that uh, gets set and then sets forever, okay? Operization, it's a process, is continuously regulated through uh, improvements. The cybersecurity landscape is dynamic and, and so the operational is as well. With the new threats emerging constantly, you need to adapt to those threats and obviously adapt to the uh, various uh, operation processes. Our solution, Defender CSPM, will provide the agile and adaptable capabilities that will allow you to evolve with those changes and ensure that there is always an ongoing protection and compliance effectively, okay? In conclusion, Microsoft Defender CSPM is a powerful tool for your cybersecurity arsenal. When implemented effectively, it's not only, uh, it's not only a tool that enhances your security, but also a tool that provides a strategic, a strategic advantage and will enable your organization to innovate and grow securely into the cloud environment. Remember, the goal is not just to protect against threats, but to create an environment where security is a key component of your operational success. And next, we're gonna go into a demo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my environment. So it all starts by obviously planning and deployment. 
we're going to skip those parts because I don't think there are much to demo on uh, on the planning part, right? But deployment either there is a very limited <clears throat> when it comes to deploy, other than obviously enabling configure the proper um, plans. So let's skip directly to the operationalizations. So the very first thing you do, obviously, as I said earlier, is that as you in as you uh, bank on Defender for Cloud, you're gonna get out of the box by default without no configuration whatsoever, the foundational CSPM. Foundational CSPM is available for all your environment, be in Azure subscriptions. And obviously, when you want a demo, something doesn't work. Okay, I apologize. Let's refresh this page. It doesn't work. Oh. Okay, one more try. Okay. Look. Nope. All right. Plan B. Let me go ahead and open a, a private subscriptions. Let's see if it works in the Okay, it seems to work on the other. Let me increase the zoom. Uh, okay. All right, so I apologize for the technical difficulties on the demo. Looks like on my own private environment, I do have a working Defender for Cloud. Okay, so let's, let's start all over again. The foundational CSPM is indeed available for everyone by default and it's included in any configurations of your Defender for Cloud. Not only for Azure, but as well all, uh, for all your multi-cloud um, integrator environment, be AWS, or Google Cloud, or GCP, okay? It is indeed over here. You don't have options to do turn it on and off. It's indeed enabled default. What you need to do is basically ensure that you're gonna enable the next, the next level up plan, which is Defender SPM. That is something that you can enable uh, at the uh, single subscription manually or through a scripts or through a policies, or you can enable a scale by using both infrastructure as a code, you know, slash API or scripts, and as well as Azure policies. Equivalently, let me see if it works over here. Equivalently, if I go ahead and open any of my connected uh, multi-cloud environments, such as AWS, I should have a same similar configuration by default. CSPM foundational is enabled. It will provide the basic CSPM, and then you have an options to move and uh, turn on the Defender CSPM. So <clears throat> once you have integrated all your multi cloud, all your environment, Azure, AWS, and GCP, whichever you have, the next thing you want to ensure that you have also integration with your repository for your code. If you have a GitHub, Azure DevOps, GitLab currently with it, that's for support, make sure you integrate such environments so you can start monitoring the security within those repo right from the beginning. And again, DevOps security is part of a, of a, of a CSPM a foundational and as well, obviously, for Defender CSPM. Once you've done so, the next thing is into operationalizations is that on a daily basis, you want to make sure that your posture is indeed monitored. Okay, when I look in, in my posture, security posture, things that I can look at are few. Number one, I can look at the security score on my environments. I have a, the overall secure score, which is the aggregated value across 
the values of all the environments you currently manage. And you can actually, you know, filter out those environments and you see pretty much uh, more detail for Azure, AWS, and GCP respectively, or again, as a all. okay? At the moment, the 48% is the secure score as calculated across all my subscriptions, all my accounts, all my GCP projects as a cloud environment, as well as my DevOps uh, reports, okay? The other thing that I uh, want to see here is the environment risk, okay? How many clear recommendations are exposed? That is important to why, because obviously the secure score will provide you a good sense of security uh, level, but knowing exactly how many of those security recommendations are identified as a critical, it's the most important um, value the, that you can use to evaluate the priority on which you can really get such recommendations. Here you have 169 recommendation elevated as a critical, and then below critical, every 183 high, medium 926, and so forth. And then next you have 103 attack that have been um, uh, discovered. Those attack paths are possible attack vectors there can be turned into a serious breach. Those are proactive visualizations of a possible uh, vulnerabilities that are correlated to each other, giving you a visibility into an entry point access, accessing your environment and, and possibility to move a laterally from the entry point to additional resource until you reach out the destination um, jewel or resource where maybe you have stored some sensitive data, okay? Then through your operation, you want to make sure that those number are, this number is pretty high, close to 100%, and those numbers are low because those are the negative numbers. This is the good number. Those are the numbers that will tell you that you have some serious problem. The other parameter that you want to look and monitor and during your day-to-day -day operation is the operations, is the governance part, okay? How many of those critical recommendations or recommendations in general are being worked out in terms of mitigation remediations, okay? Are all those um, carry over in time according to the change request that was uh, uh, created or are they overdue? And then the other part is how, how many are not assigned yet, which is important as well, more than those that are overdue, meaning like, in this case, I have 4,429 unsigned recommendations of out of the 5,214, meaning like I have a very poor governance operation in place, governance rule, meaning I have to work on make sure that those recommendations are indeed assigned properly in time and then carried over for uh, the change to be applied. Okay, I can also uh, expand each individual, those environments to see each individual recommendation, which by the way, if I click, will take you right here in the recommendation page. So the recommendation page is more for the, the security uh, engineer that now will look into, you know, in detail those, um, you know, resources across the environment and how the criticality of the vulnerabilities and misconfiguration fund for those resources are exposed. So the value that is important to see over here is the risk level, the number of attack path, and obviously if it is assigned for remediations and who is the owner and then what's the stage of the remediations, okay? Um, the risk factor is evaluated, uh, the risk level is evaluated by risk factor. We calculate the risk factor based on several of uh, factor, including something new that is uh, based on your own um, on um, uh, what do you call uh, value proposition of such resources. So how do you configure that individual value proposition? It's very easy. So during, in order to operationalize fully to the full extension, once you enable the plans, you need to make sure that in your plans, you have all the extension, all the components turned on. Those are very important for the successful operation of the Defender SSP and why? Because those components will carry the agent the agentless based scans that are going to evaluate the vulnerability of our machines 
finding for secrets, discover your Kubernetes and the vulnerability across your containers. Very important, we'll discover a data that considered sensitive and then allows you to give you insights into the permission management. Once you've done that, the next thing is ensure that you have obviously um, the proper configuration for your data sensitive, which will define which data you are going to ex, um, discover that is defined in your own business uh, sensitive or the label that are considered confidential for your documentations. Next is a resource criticality. So as you I say early, we are going to evaluate the risk level of those misconfigurations, but you can also manage the criticality of a such resource by defined the proper value. How do you do? You go, you're going to do that through resource criticality section, sections. Next, you want to make sure that the proper governance and remediation uh, process are in place. Therefore, you click on the governance rule and you're going to set the set of a rule which will automate the assignment of owner to a specific change request. So the time needed for the change request to be carried over and then uh, um, additional um, uh, information related to the change request plus the notification when the change request is overdue. Proper governance rule is important and fully automated and such is very likely the way to go so that you don't have uh, just in like in our situation for, for over 4,000 recommendations and assigned to any um, owners. Once you have that, the next thing, if you have an ITSM in place such as ServiceNow, is to ensure that the change request is carried and replicated into your ServiceNow platform so that ServiceNow becomes the um, platform to manage that change uh, through time. Okay. Next thing you want to see your daily compliance. Your daily compliance will give you a full picture based on the standards that you have indeed uh, enable they are most likely affecting your industry, your, comp your company, the type of business that you're in, okay? And finally, because we want to ensure that everything is secure from the beginning, that uh, you need to um, uh, integrate those uh, uh, code repository and you can manage such DevOps security through the DevOps uh, dashboard. Here you have visibility into your uh, uh, various repository and then additional information can be found by click on each one of those. Oops, and see what kind of uh, security vulnerability we're finding, if there are any alerts and uh, mitigate accordingly. OK, uh, one more thing that I want to highlight is that in the recommendations we stress the risk level as well as the attack path. When we look on the attack path, the important part of here is that we are generating those attack path based on the information that we have assessed and correlated um, and the correlated um, you know, security vulnerabilities. So here it's important because having a resource such as Contoso DSVM, which is a high level, has a critical risk level with the seven attack packs, you want to make sure that this specific resource is remediated as, as quick as possible. And then having the static assigned is a, a red flag. You want to make you want to make sure that who's in charge for this machine, which we don't have the owner, is indeed taking full ownership and go ahead and then fix it. <clears throat> Once you click it on it, you're going to be you're going to be exposed with information related to the resource the findings of those related to those resources in terms of vulnerabilities and then the attack path that the resource is involved into. And here for the attack path, you can also navigate and see how the attack path starts. It starts from accessing the, the public IP address of these Contoso uh, virtual machines and then navigating to laterally to by leveraging a managed identity uh, configure on those virtual machines to go ahead and get access to search accounts, which by the way is considered a critical because that symbol over here is uh, the symbol and icon for critical assets. Why it's critical? Most likely because it contains sensitive data. As a matter of fact, it does contain sensitive data. If you look in the inside, it does have a sensitive data. In this case, credit card number, some <coughs> ASP.NET machine keys, so on and so forth. 
So as you can see, implementing Defender CSPM with the proper operationalizations will give you high visibility into your data security. But besides that, it will give you the tool sets in order to be proactive and in time mitigate such security misconfiguration so you can be um, very much protected and ensure that the breach doesn't happen. With this, I'm going to conclude the, the demo, going back to the presentation and open up for questions. Thank you, Julio. Uh, this was indeed a great uh, presentation. I think you were running out of water there. <laughs> and uh, I want to make sure that I'm drinking my sip of water. So uh, the question, there was like, uh, about 30 questions out there. The team did an awesome job answering pretty much uh, all of them. I see that maybe one have it's in the middle of uh, being answered, although we have reached the top of the hour here. So I want to make sure that the team has. Uh, does the team have any questions that would like us to raise to elaborate further? Just one question. Or Dick, do we want to verbalize this agentless scanning, the one that you're uh, about to answer? I can go ahead and verbalize it. Uh, agentless scanning gives us a lot of, uh, of uh, false uh, positives or other protection systems include Defender for Endpoint does not detect from the same indicators. Is it a question or is a statement? I think it's a it's a feedback and recommendation that. Oh, they, okay. Or, it's a feedback. Yeah. Uh, right. I thank you for the feedback. I mean, indeed, as any other tools, we are now at. I mean, as any other intelligent tool, perfection is still far from. Uh, we are working constantly to deviate from false positive. If you are indeed seeing any false positive, please give us those feedbacks. But not just like you know, well, we have a false positive. Please, if you can pinpoint which ones are so we can actually look into our engine and see if uh, we can tweak it. OK. Uh, we have a last one that just came in. Do we have any security control or benchmark that we can follow for AVD? For AVDs. So AVDs or AVDs in general is a totally um, it's a different, you know, top topic. Uh, in generally speaking, you know, um, AVDs are not fully 100% assessed by Defender for Cloud. Although we do have specific ones that are including defenders um, uh, for several planes. So it depends what type of AVDs, um, and for such, we do have included within our plans. Generally speaking, the AVDs are most likely uh, client OS, right? Um, but there are specific ones that are indeed covered. Thank you, Julio, uh, <coughs> for being our guest today and for sharing a uh, great information again with our public community. Um, also would like to thank our SMEs who helped us with answering the questions and providing this uh, resource or information. There's quite of links that were shared, uh, sending folks to the right place to gain some uh, knowledge on the topic and, uh, and more. So to all the listeners still on the line, if you're someone who wishes to aid in protection of the world from cyber threats and desires to have a say in shaping our strategies, blueprints and recommendations, then we invite you to participate on our customer satisfaction survey spring campaign. Uh, the link that I just shared with you as together we can make a global impact and would appreciate your time on responding to this. Uh, for those of you who may have additional questions on the topic we just covered or other product related questions, uh, please feel free to raise them on our Microsoft uh, Tech Community Discussion Space uh, area. The short link for that is aka.ms slash MDC community. Thank you all for being part of our community and uh, for joining us on these webinars. We hope to see you next time. Goodbye.